Now back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. And the sins of a family fall on the daughter. Hey, and welcome back to the show. We're talking about a state law on the law show this time around. Joining us in studio, John Lakes and Emmanuel Fung from Lakes White LLP in North Vancouver. And uh, we talked about uh, probate and the fees that you have to pay. And, and John, I'm surprised that they're that low because I, as a layperson, thought that when someone passed away, the government comes in and scoops up all of this money and the who's left doesn't get much. But you're saying it's 1.4%. So on a million dollar property, it's 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 fourteen thousand. That's right. So you paid the realtor more to sell the house well, than you would to saddle the, yeah. the fees. And people come back from California and they get all these horror stories and things like that. But it's people are are shocked actually how. So how is it different there? Just quickly, what what's? Oh, what? I think they. I mean, California is like thousands of dollars. I mean, they'll pay twenty percent in fees. And really? Because we don't because we don't have we don't have inheritance taxes here. We have probate fees, which is really a type of tax, but it's been, I think it's been purposely set at a rate that it's, it's too low for people to try to avoid. Although, for example, I was dealing with an estate not long ago where there was a, a woman who had a house and they were trying to avoid probate fees by having the house declared at $1 and they created an elaborate trust, not by us, but another law firm. And the family was afraid that they were going to eliminate eliminate the um, exemption but they didn't so basically what happened they were able to declare the house for one dollar instead of paying probably about eighty thousand dollars in probate fees although one of the children actually felt a bit bad about it because she said she really didn't feel like she didn't think it was that bad a deal to pay mm -hmm. it but it's um if the whole the sole reason that someone wants to do their estate planning is to vote probate fees it's probably not worth it Plus, there's always a possibility that legislation could be... Because your will is in effect at the time of your death. Right. Not when you write it. Not now. So it could be out of date the day after you write it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think we have to pay... Everybody complains about hospital waits and things like that. They need money from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And kids are going to be inheriting way more than their parents. I had did. no idea it was 1.4%. So speaking of taxes, and you're saying but this is just a polite way of calling it a tax... Um, what other taxes are need to be addressed here? Well, so, you know, probate fees are issued by the province. So right. the province gets paid, but the federal government also wants their money as well. Mm -hmm. What a um, shock. <laughs> and so what they, what they do is they tax, you know, the deceased in the same way as with income tax, except they do a bit of a fiction. They pretend that immediately before you died, mm -hmm. um, you sold all of your capital assets. Right. And this, you know, for example, if you've got um, vacation property, which John will talk about later, um, this means that you automatically have capital gains, whack a load of capital gains or income that could be payable. Now, so they, how do they assess the value? Who does that? So you would, you would, it's self-assessed as you would normally pay taxes, but you just pretend like you sold it the second before you died. Mm -hmm. um, but the most important um, exemption, so they've, they've got this rule. It's called the deemed disposition rule. But they have exemptions to that rule. And the most important of these exemptions is called the spousal rollover. And it's really a common sense tax exemption. It says that if you leave something to your spouse, this deemed disposition rule, this um, capital gains rule, is doesn't apply. So it's sort of delayed because most spouses end up leaving their properties to each other. Mm -hmm. And so the federal government has this exemption that says as long as you leave things or all your capital property to your spouse, that spouse won't have to pay a whack load of uh, capital gains. Um, is this mostly just real estate, or is it stocks? And this would apply to stocks. Um, apply to anything that appreciates, that grows in value. Even you know artwork, for example, if if it increases in value. So this is called the spouse rollover. You know, if you leave everything to your spouse, or you leave capital property to your spouse, um, they don't have to pay this this capital gains immediately. Um, eventually, it gets paid when your spouse passes away. But you know as long as your spouse is still alive. Now what about RRSPs? So um, RRSPs are um, one of those things that you can designate a beneficiary for. So they can pass outside of the will if you designate a beneficiary. So for. is that your free legal advice today <laughs> is to uh, make sure that your spouse is, l is listed on that those uh, sorts of I think it's, it's something plans. everyone should do. You should list someone as your beneficiary of your RRSP. But there's something you've got to be careful about with RRSPs because you know, even if you've listed, if you've listed someone other than your spouse as um, the beneficiary as your RSP, 
because that spousal rollover applies. Taxes are payable as income. So, you know, say you've got $77,000 in your RSP and you give it to a child. Um, and what a lot of people may not realize is that their estate has to pay um, income tax on the full value of the RSP in the year of death. Hmm. So, you know, all of a sudden the estate has an income of $77,000. And this can cause problems. Um, you know, if you've designated one child as the beneficiary of your RSP, and then you've, you know, changed your will so that, you know, you've given um, other things in your will to your other child, that your um, your state has to pay the income tax on the RSP, and that reduces the amount that would be paid to to the second child. Hmm. You're taking from one. Exactly, um, without realizing it. So you right. could be thinking, I'm going to, you know, designate. You know, one child is a beneficiary. And, and this is—is is this the same with pensions? Um, yes. So pensions can work in, in very much the same way. Now, in, in BC, most of the time, pensions end up going to to the spouse anyway. So again, spouses usually with pensions, you know, one spouse passes away. If there's anything left, it goes to the second spouse. Mm -hmm. and by the time the second spouse passes away, there's really nothing to worry about. The pension has been exhausted, so it's less of a problem with pensions, more of a problem with designating beneficiaries. So. But uh, but there is can be a problem. That's why sometimes these people in the late 40s, 50s got to do a proper tax planning. We had an estate not long ago where a, a woman had been a nurse for 30 years and she had worked full time and she had children and she was divorced and she had an aneurysm and all of a sudden she died very suddenly. So her pension was actually worth over $400,000. Because she's still a long way to go, right? And she had contributed for 30 years. Right. So $400,000 in her pension and another she 15000 I had to 50000 in her RSPs. All I know is is her tax liability in that for that mm -hmm. because all was put in, in her income the year For that death. one year. So she had, she paid over, there, her estate paid over $100,000 in income. Hmm. And again, this year with the tax increases, anybody over $200,000 pays a higher income rate. So... So people, especially if they're divorced or single, and should be looking at their, realize there is a tax liability, and the only way they can get around it is maybe getting a life insurance policy to cover that tax liability. But by the time they're looking at the life insurance, they're 55 or 60, it's and expensive. it's getting pretty expensive. So, so the thing we always have to advise people is if you're an executor, you got, you've got to pay all these monies up front first and um you know you never know what you're going to have when you die but not everything so that is so is when for you for the typical north shore estate especially people under about 65 you know they'll have a pension or they'll have an rsp and people don't realize there's a tax liability for that so you're saying more money goes to um just the general income tax that is filed on the year of death than probate fees yeah, so more, more is going oh, to RSPs because yeah. if, if they're not married and that money isn't rolling over automatically with this exemption for the spouse, then this money can be grabbed yeah. by the government as a capital gain, right? And as the, income tax. Yeah. Income yeah. tax. And the spouse eventually will be paying that because when they start withdrawing the RSP, the RIF as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the things with older people, what they should be doing is I tell clients, like we get to a certain stage in life, you start have to start taking money out of your RIF. Mm-hmm. And I tell clients they should talk to their accountants in November of every year because maybe they should be paying more, taking more out of their RSPs at that point because they're paying at a lower rate. Because when you're, you know, you're paying at the top rate, if you've got a big, I mean, 40, it could be 40, what, 44% or something. So yeah, what you're yeah. saying, if there's a big pot of money there, say there's a half a million dollar RSP, yeah. you're, you're taking that half a million dollars and then adding it to whatever income, income they yeah, took from exactly. their uh, as a riff right yeah. so maybe they took out fifty thousand dollars through that year out of their and they're paying tax on that yeah. and then the and then the half million dollar that's left so your income that year is five hundred fifty thousand dollars yeah and then you're getting taxed at forty something percent yeah For so the then it's some of that yeah. yeah well that's so. that's interesting so, so it's it's good sometimes to be more aggressive about you know taking money out of your your rsp and um so that's when you work with an accountant to figure out what the best plan is well, yeah, I mean, the problem is they should be meeting with their accountant every year, really. Mm -hmm. But especially when you get over 71, because sometimes people resent taking the money out of their RSPs. Oh, i got to pay taxes on it. Well, you'd be better off to pay it 22% than 44%. Yeah. 
And but they could say, well, I'm gone. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you can at least put in a tax-free savings account or something. So Yes, yeah, so you can you can do it again. You can double but, down again, right? Yeah. But people, and I also find people really underestimate the value of their pensions, too, if they die at a young age, too. Yeah, because they think it's just what they've put in, but you have to, it's a multiplier effect, right? They're paying, yeah. paying over. And, and it seems so abstract because we're all going to live to 100, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, someone who didn't live to 100, unfortunately, uh, Prince passed away recently, and when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, that situation and, uh, and what happens when there is no will uh, next on The Law Show. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CIO 650.